This is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com, a very special treat for you today. What we're going to do is we're going to do a side-by-side, -side, real use, real world comparison of the Excalibur 2900 dehydrator and the Sedona food dehydrator by Trivest. So both these models are dehydrators and will basically evaporate the water off your food. Dehydration, in my opinion, is one of the best ways that you could preserve your food. So uh, this one's kind of like the same model they've had for many, many, many years. The design hasn't changed probably in like 20 years. There's no significant design changes or major improvements in this design. So that may play a factor on how this does in the test because we are not only going to test how well it dehydrates and how long it takes to dehydrate the same exact thing, but we're also going to do a couple other things. We have uh, thermometers here with a probe on them and we're going to basically set the uh, dial to a certain temperature and then we're going to measure the temperature to see how accurate the dial is. Now on the Excalibur it's basically a rheostat dial in here. You're going to set the temperature and we're going to see and one of the problems with the Excalibur is that you know it hasn't been accurate to the temperature on the dial so I encourage people to purchase the additional Taylor timer thermometer so that you can monitor the temperature if you are concerned at what temperature is inside the dehydrator. On the Sedona, on the other hand, this thing is all computer controlled. So uh, on the little readout panel, it basically will, you'll be able to set the temperature digitally, <laughs> and then it'll show you the uh, temperature that you set. It will actually not show you the temperature that's currently inside the machine. So once again, we have a uh, exact the same a thermometer to uh, check the temperature inside the machine and make sure that the temperature that it's set to is the temperature inside the machine. Now, you know, all tolerances in both machines may vary by a couple degrees. In the manual of the Sedona, they say it may vary by three degrees either direction, and the Excalibur basically doesn't, uh, basically they say their temperature fluctuates. They call it hyperwave technology where their temperature fluctuates, you know, a little bit, and they say it helps to uh, make your product dehydrate faster. So we're gonna see if that's true, because what we're gonna dehydrate today are some kale chips. But besides dehydrating just the kale chips, we're going to go one step further, actually two steps further. In a little bit, we're going to do this test. This is actually cal called uh, X-Tech -Tech Instruments. They're a very good brand. Uh, electromagnetic Field Meter. So this means there's Gauss. So we're going to use this Gauss meter, a digital Gauss meter, on both machines. And we're going to see which one generates a stronger electromagnetic field, or EMF. So some people may be concerned about appliances that generate high EMFs and some people may want appliances that generate lower EMFs. So we're going to find out which one of these two, if any, you know, make a higher or lower EMF. Um, you know, that being said, this also may not be important to you. <laughs> so we're going to do it for fun anyways. But what is going to be important to you is this test right here. I've uh, got two of these uh, devices called kilowatt and these kilowatt meters Basically what you do is you plug in the appliance, so on this side we have the Excalibur plugged in, and on this side we have the Sedona plugged in. And what this does, this measures the, the voltage, the wattage, the amperage, also calculates the power factor, the hertz, um, and the kilowatt hours. So that will actually tell you how many kilowatt hours it used during our dehydration process. So uh, once we have these up and running, we're just going to keep them running and we're not going to shut it off until they're done dehydrating and then after this one runs for say 12 hours we can see maybe this one used more power than the Trivest Sedona dehydrator. Maybe this one used more. I mean I don't know what's going to happen. Alright so now the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's go ahead and turn on both machines. We're going to turn on the uh, Sedona. It has a nice beep and it's set to 118 degrees. We're going to hit the on button as soon as we set this one on and this one has a rotating dial, so we're just going to set it to 118 degrees. Hit that one on. So now both dehydrators should be running. You can hear the difference in the noise. Definitely the Sedona, I couldn't even tell it was on, so I had to actually listen closely. Much quieter, maybe like half as loud as the Excalibur. And once again, you know, that may be a criteria for you. You want a dehydrator that's not that loud. <laughs> so the Sedona would be a better choice. In addition, the Sedona has some unique features such as uh, Sedona will let you run uh, the trays, either half the dehydrator, one fan, because it does have two fans, it'll let you run the top set of trays and the top fan, or the bottom set of trays. 
In addition, it has a day and a night mode. So right now it's in the uh, daytime mode. The daytime mode runs the fans at full speed and the nighttime mode runs the fans at a slower speed. So it'll actually even be quieter than it is now. And at this point, my estimation is that it's about half as quiet or half as loud as the Excalibur. We can see here on our power meters uh, right now, the voltage uh, into the machines is 110.5, 110.2 approximately. How about the wattage? Hit the wattage button. So the Sedona is pulling 519 watts and the uh, Excalibur is pulling 527 watts, looks like, from upside down. <laughs> Hertz, both machines run at the 60 Hertz and the kilowatt hours so far are 0 0.01. So you know what? We're going to just see how these machines run. Now we're going to both, from this point on, we're going to leave the machines on running so that we have a fair and legitimate test at this point. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take these uh, meters. So once again, this is the Taylor Digital Thermometer Timer that we offer at DiscountJuicers.com. This can be used for two reasons. Number one, to monitor the temperature inside the dehydrator. So that can be very important if you're into what's called living in raw foods. And if you're not, you probably don't need one of these. But if you are, you could monitor the temperature because they say in the living in raw foods, you do not want the, you know, the temperature in the dehydrator or the temperature actually of the food more correctly to go above 118 degrees because that's when enzymes start to degrade. And uh, enzymes degrading means the life force is lost in the food. And, uh, you know, people into living in raw foods want to eat foods rich in life force so that they will be alive and vibrant and have really good health. But in any case, so this one will do that. It will allow you to check the temperature inside the dehydrator at any time. And in addition, uh, we'll turn this on. And uh, how this works is we're just going to go ahead and open the door and we're just going to stick the probe of the thermometer inside the dehydrator. Put that on the second shelf. And then we're just going to go ahead and close it on up. So over on the front of this thermometer timer, you can see a couple different settings. Right here is the uh, thermo temp. So currently inside the machine looks to be 89 degrees, 90 degrees, 91. It's currently heating up because we do have this machine set at approximately 118 degrees. So optimally, this thermo temp should read 118 degrees if we have the temperature control knob set for 118 degrees. Uh, the next one here is called the set temp. So once again, if you are concerned about getting it getting too hot in your dehydrator, this will allow you to set a set temp. So say we have our set temp set at 125. If the temperature inside the dehydrator or the thermo temp gets up to 125, this little uh, timer thermometer will start beeping at you. So that way you could rush over and then turn the dehydrator down if it's getting too hot. The other thing this allows you to do it's a countdown timer. So you can basically set this timer to 24 hours to 12 hours, you know, and then hit start. It'll count down from that many hours to zero and then beep. So this can be useful, especially in the Excalibur where, you know, you don't have a built-in timer like on the Sedona. You could set it, oh, well, I need to dehydrate my kale chips for 12 hours. You could set this for 12 hours, hit start, and then when you come back and it's zero, you know 12 hours has elapsed and your kale chips or whatever you're dehydrating is finished. So we got that all set up in the Excalibur. Let's go ahead and set that up in the Sedona. I'm going to go ahead and open that machine up there and uh, just basically set this inside. Once again on the second tray. And uh, we're going to close that on up and uh, turn it on. And uh, once again, this is also set for 118 degrees. Now, you know, when you do turn the machines on from a cold start, from a cold start, the dehydrators are both at operating or room temperature. And they take some time to basically get the heating coil uh, to warm up and then the fan to blow to basically get the temperature up to the temperature that you have it set at. So while we're waiting, what we're going to do next is a Gauss test or electromagnetic field test. So this is the electromagnetic field meter and how this works is that you point this at the point you want to see how much gauss or electromagnetic fields there are and you know from past experience the place where there's the most 
EMFs or electromagnetic fields in dehydrators are in the heating core assembly, but more importantly, the fan. So the fan assembly generates the most EMFs. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on and we're gonna get a reading at the back of the machine. So now we have the electromagnetic field reader on. It's running at approximately 19.6, so there's some EMS maybe just in the airspace or above. But as you can see, we could lower this down to the dehydrator. Whoa, check that out. So it's reading at like 86.9 and it fluctuates, you know, but as we move closer to the fan, it, it taps out. So it actually the range on this is a 199.9 M Gauss. So as we go down and move around, it basically just maxes out. So it goes over the max and it just shows one. So you know, over in this area here, maybe the fan is over here. Well, yeah, that's where it is. It just maxes out at one, and that is the Excalibur. So it seems to have, you know, in a lot of areas behind the unit. And once again, you know, you're not necessarily standing behind the unit like I am today, unless you're doing a demo. You know, this is inside a cabinet or far away from you. So, you know, most of the EMFs is at the back of the unit, not the front. Next, we're gonna go ahead and step back over to the Sedona. And, you know, we'll go into the same position above it where we were at the Excalibur and it was a fairly high reading we have basically a reading of one or actually 0.7 we're gonna go ahead and move down the reading is going up to 2, 3, 5, 6, 8, 10, 11, 16, 19, 21, 25, 28, 33, 45, 62, 66 let's see 103, 118 over in this area 65, 75, 120, 130, 140 Let's see if we could even get it to max out. We're moving it all around in the back of the machine. How about right behind the fans? Right behind the fans. We're at a 46, 52. So I'm trying to... Oh, we had a 198 reading, but it still didn't peak out at over 200 like the Excalibur. So just from our electromagnetic field test, the Excalibur puts out more EMFs or more Gauss. So if you want a machine that puts out less EMFs, once again, go with the Sedona Dehydrator by TriVest. Next, let's go ahead and start buttering up the kale and the collard leaves because we're going to make some collard chips. This is a real world test and we're going to see how much power is used in these dehydrators. What we're going to do today is I got my little pastry brush and uh, I've, picked, I've made a, a dressing. I like to make some uh, tree collard chips or collard chips or kale chips or whatever leafy green chips we got some uh, dino kale here so we're gonna i took i made this a uh, simple dressing this dressing has basically uh sweet lime juice sun-dried tomatoes sun-dried hot peppers and some uh sauerkrauts and finally some sesame seeds and brazil nuts so basically we're just going to take this and we're going to paste it on each of the leaves and then we're just gonna simply put these leaves in the dehydrator and this is how easy it is to make some kale chips in your own dehydrator. Now if you go to buy kale chips in the store, they can cost like $6.99 for just three ounces of kale chips. But if you're growing your own greens, like I am here, these are all from my garden, fresh picked, you know, you could literally make them for next to nothing actually. So we're going to load up the dehydrators and we're basically going to do one tray of, this is a dinosaur kale in the Excalibur and then one tray in the Sedona. And then we're going to, you know, uh, dehydrate the other leaves. These are tree collards, one tray and one tray. So it's all going to be fairly even. And uh, we're going to see which one takes longer to dehydrate and which one costs more money to operate. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to get to work and uh, load it up. So we're off and running. We got the dehydrators full and you can see here there's different trays. This tray has dino kale, this has tree collards, this has regular collards, this has red variegated sorrel and that has bok choy. We filled both dehydrators with the same exact stuff, you know, one level of each and now we're just going to let them dehydrate overnight and uh, you know, see which one is finished first and see which one uses more electricity. So we're back, it's the next day, and these have been dehydrating now for approximately 22 hours. So now we're gonna see how much power was used and also check the final end product. And the first thing I like to say is like, I could feel the heat transfer like, this is a lot thinner case, this is a lot thicker case. Heat transfer is a lot more in the Excalibur. That being said, on the Excalibur, 
we're still set at 118 degrees and in the tribacidona dehydrator we're also set at 118 degrees. Now let's check the thermometer to see what temperature it is inside the machine. Once again we have not changed the temperature adjustment. Inside the Excalibur you can see the current thermometer temp is 122 degrees. So that is above the 118 degrees we've set it and now actually even earlier just now it was up at 128 degrees so that's 10 degrees hotter. This is uh, not too surprising because Excalibur does say the temperature does fluctuate a little bit you know over the adjusted setting. That being said if you are concerned about your food getting too hot like over 118 degrees you better set your dehydrator at like 105 so it definitely doesn't get too hot. Over here on the TriVest every time I've looked at this uh, it's been under the setting on the thermostat. So currently inside the TriVest dehydrator it's at 108 degrees and it actually has remained pretty constant. So once again this is a good 10 degrees underneath what the dehydrator is set at. So how will this affect the dehydration process inside the machines? Well it's very simple. The hotter the temperature the shorter the amount of time it takes to dehydrate. The cooler the temperature, the longer the time it takes to dehydrate. So it's not going to surprise me if like the Excalibur is already finished dehydrating and the TriVest isn't quite dehydrating because in this particular test it wasn't quite a fair test because if this is 107 degrees inside the machine and this is whoa currently 125 degrees inside the machine that's basically almost like an that is an 18 point or 18 degree difference now I don't know about you but an 18 degree difference is huge you know say it's I keep my heater in the uh, winter time at 60 degrees on in my house you know so it always is at least 60 degrees and that's still pretty cold but say it goes from 60 on up to 78 whoa 78 is like I'm in the tropics it's really nice temperature so at a hotter temperature once again it's going to dehydrate faster so the next time I run this test what I'm going to do is I'm going to calibrate both thermometers so that they're constantly at the same temperature that way it will be a fair test so that we can see which dehydrator truly is more efficient and runs better because the temperatures are going to be even and then uh, you know all else factors would be the same they would dehydrate at the same things the next thing I really is, am interested in showing you guys is how much power was used so let's go ahead and do a close up on these kilowatt meters as you can see here it's on the voltage uh, 120.3 volts 120.2 volts we're going to go ahead and click the amp button now you can see this one's pulling 0 0.76 0 0.72 amp this is pulling 2.58 amps now once again I want to say that both always on these meters uh, these will fluctuate depending if it's in a running mode where the fan only is running and the heating element is not running or if it's in a heating mode where the fan and the heating element is running when the heating element is running then it sucks a lot more power so uh, next let's go ahead and hit the watt button and right now this is pulling 36 watts this looks like it's pulling uh, 561 watts it's a little fluctuating a little bit and you know those once again cycle so although this is pulling 38 watts now that's because this dehydrator is currently 120 degrees that's over 118 degrees where we set it so it is, it's actually hot enough and the heating elements not on the uh, the Sedona probably is not up to operating temperature so it's actually pulling more wattage to get it heated up oh and you I just heard the Excalibur click off and now you can see it just jumped up now from whatever wattage it was at to 568 and now this one dumped down to 10 so it's a constant you know pull more wattage or versus a you know a, a running mode versus the heating mode next we're gonna hit the button one more time this is the volt amps or VA this is pulling 571 this one's pulling 11.4 once again these numbers always fluctuate next we're gonna hit the Hertz obviously we run on 60 Hertz here in America so both uh, basically show 60 next is a, a mode called PF or power factor so this one looks like a 0.99 that's 0.99 or 1.0 
So both those are fairly similar once again. Next, we're going to hit the, uh, this is the main button that we're interested in. This is the kilowatt hours, or basically kilowatt hours is uh, how much money it's going to cost you to run the dehydrator. So you can see the Excalibur used 6.77 kilowatt hours, and the Sedoni dehydrator pulled 8.03 kilowatt hours. So how does that work into, uh, you know, how much it costs you to run the dehydrator? Well, basically the utility company will charge you per kilowatt hour. So to take an even round number, we could say, you know, and it's approximately right, it may vary depending on where you live, more or less, um, 10 cents a kilowatt hour. So to run this dehydrator for 22 hours, it would cost you uh, 67 cents or 67.7 cents on the Excalibur and this one will cost you basically 80.3 cents to run, basically to dehydrate your kale chips. So once again, comparing, uh, you know, dehydrating your own kale chips or tomatoes to buying, you know, store-bought dehydrated kale chips or tomatoes, always cheaper to make your own. So the next thing is, let's go ahead and open up the machines and see what the final result was. Let's go ahead and turn off both machines here. And open both doors and check it out. So here, the first tray we're going to look at here is the uh, dinosaur kale. So uh, these dinosaur kales, they love to be fairly dry, ready to eat. Could go a little bit longer. Definitely good. Next tray here. Looks like the uh, tree collards. These ones all look to dry as well. Ready to go. So these look like the walking stick kale. These look fairly dry. Also ready to go. This tray is the red variegated sorrel. Also pretty much dry. Ready to go as well. And the last tray, this was the uh, bok choy. And these are actually also all ready to go. Mmm. Delicious. So the Excalibur dehydrator, basically in 22 hours, has finished dehydrating. Once again, the temperature was, in some cases, you know, more than 10 degrees hotter than the set temp. So once again, when you dehydrate something, the time it takes to dehydrate a food depends on a few things. Number one, the moisture content in the food you're dehydrating. So things that are a lot have a lot more moisture take more time to dehydrate. The second criteria is the temperature of the dehydrator. So once again, the hotter the temperature, the shorter the time, the lower the temperature, the longer the time. And also, the other factor that may play into consideration is where you live. So for example, in Las Vegas, where there's not that much humidity in the air anyways, it's going to be a little bit quicker to dehydrate compared to South Florida, where it's a lot more humid, or Hawaii, where they have a lot more humidity in the air because you're fighting against those natural forces. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the results in the Tribest dehydrator. Let's go ahead and pull these trays out. So once again, here are the uh, dinosaur kale, and it looks like we had a couple larger leaves of dinosaur kale, but the smaller leaves, let's take a look and let's try that out. They're fairly well dehydrated. They could maybe go a little bit longer. Next, this is the tree collards. And once again, you know, these do look done. So next is the walking stick kale. Once again, these look to be done also. They might go a little bit longer. Next, uh, here is the red variegated sorrel. These are definitely done. And once again, you know, these dehydrate at different times because of the different thicknesses of the leaves. The red variegated sorrel actually has a really thin leaf as well as the bok choy has a thin leaf. So they're dehydrated much faster. So actually you could run your dehydrator less by buying thin leaf vegetables. Or, you know, when you slice your food to put in the dehydrator, the slicer you thin it, the faster it's going to take to dehydrate. The fatter your slice, the longer it's take to, de to dehydrate. Finally here, we're going to look at the bok choy and the uh, bok choy. Basically, that's all finished in the tri dehydrator as well. Mmm, definitely good. 
I love some dehydrated treats. While it is always better to eat fresh food that have a high water content because after all we are 70 to 75 percent water, dehydrated foods can be fun. Hopefully you've learned in this demonstration which machine is going to be best for you, which one consumes less power, which in this case was the Excalibur, but also we found that the Excalibur ran at too hot of a temperature. So if maintaining a proper temperature is important to you, highly encourage you to get a Taylor thermometer timer so that you can monitor the temperature inside the dehydrator so it doesn't get too hot. Or minimally, I'd recommend at this point to set the dehydrator at 105 so that it may fluctuate up to 118 on its heating cycle. Otherwise, if you set it at 118, it's going to get to 128. Whereas the Tribest we saw set to 118 and actually it ran 10 degrees lower. So maybe they need to look at that and correct that so it does run more at the temperature that the dehydrator is set to. So once again, both these machines weren't exactly accurate on the temperature based on this test, but nonetheless, they produced excellent results. So hopefully you've enjoyed this test of the Excalibur dehydrator and the all-new Sedona dehydrator by Tribest. Once again, this is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.